I'm back. I figured I'd do another little video here uh, since I have everything out. And this one's going to be on um, revolver safety, um, specifically the transfer bar safety system. So let's jump right into it. I'll try to make this shorter than the last one. So um, this is a new revolver and I've done a couple videos on it so you can watch those other videos. Um, older revolvers, oh, of course, let me show you. It's unloaded, as always. Um, well, not always, but <laughs> on all the videos. So, um, older revolvers, my old Smith & Wesson that I had, the Model 66, on the hammer itself, um, if you look here, you can see that the hammer has kind of a flat end to it, right? It doesn't, it, it doesn't actually have the, the firing pin on there. My old uh, Smith & Wesson, the firing pin was on the hammer. So the hammer would actually go through this center, um, see if you can see it there, right there, it would go through that center area, and the hammer had a firing pin on it, which would hit directly on the primer of, of the cartridge. And uh, there was virtually no safety at all on that gun. There was no cylinder lock, there was no hammer lock, like this one actually has a hammer lock built into it, and there was no transfer bar. Um, and I will explain what a transfer bar is. So those guns, um, the older revolver styles, or the older types of revolvers, were notorious for, they weren't unsafe. They're safe if the hammer's down, but uh, if you drop the gun, the hammer technically could strike the firing pin against the primer when you drop the gun and fire, um, fire off a cartridge. So it would be dangerous to holster it with um, every cylinder loaded so what I mean every chamber loaded so what people would do is if this is a five shot they would load four out of five and they would keep they would keep the hammer down on an empty chamber well it that was taken up years ago that safety issue and they have since invented something called the transfer bar and there's different versions of this but all pretty much all modern revolvers have this so on a double action revolver you know you can you can cock it and shoot it, or you can shoot it like this. So that's single action, and that's double action. And how these modern revolvers work is, I'll try to show it to you here. When you pull that hammer back, this is gonna be difficult <laughs> to see here. All right, we can kind of see it right there. I'll see if I can point it out. Everything's backwards on my camera, so it's a bit tricky for me. All right, so right in there, you can kind of see the light shining off of it right down there. That's called the transfer bar. Now notice when I pull the trigger, how it moves up just a fraction of an inch. See that? So what that does is when the, when the hammer drops, try to do it over here in the center of the screen. When the hammer drops and the trigger is, is pulled back, depressed, the hammer bar, I'll try to demonstrate it, Sorry, the transfer bar, so, ah, it's hard to explain. So on this side, this is the cartridge, okay? Everything's backwards, mirror image in my camera, so it's a bit hard to do. Here's the cartridge, and there's a firing pin right here, and then here is the transfer bar, and then here's the hammer. So when that transfer bar is down and the hammer goes like that, it actually does not contact the firing pin, which in turn does not transfer that energy into the primer. So when you pull the trigger, the transfer bar comes up, which actually transfers the energy from the hammer through the transfer bar into the firing pin, which strikes the cartridge, and boom. So on the old Smith & Wesson that had a firing pin built into the hammer, it didn't have that. Pretty much all new revolvers have this transfer bar in there. So what that means is, if I had this thing cocked and I wanted to lower the hammer, and I obviously you have to pull the you have to pull the trigger to release the hammer. As soon as I've released it and I take my finger off, see there's a little bit of play there. I take my finger off the trigger, like that. Even if I slipped, it shouldn't fire the gun. Now I haven't tested it, but this has been tested many many times. Um, so if you drop the gun, even if it's cocked, it should not fire. Um, although I don't know who would carry around a cocked gun like this. So that's kind of the, the whole thought process behind the transfer bars. It transfers the energy from the hammer uh, through the transfer bar, through the firing pin, and into the cartridge. So yeah, that 
you cannot fire this gun unless you have the trigger all the way back. Um, that's pretty much how the transfer bar works. Unless you have that trigger pulled, the hammer, the, the transfer bar is going to come down. The hammer will not come in direct contact with the firing pin. And I think we can actually show that. Let's see if I can show it here. If you can see through there. Notice how... Let me see. Oh, see, I can't even cock it back with the cylinder out of place. I was going to try to show you. Maybe you can through there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if it'll work here. So if I pull this and I let the hammer down, I can see it through my end. I don't know if you can through there. See, the firing pin goes through that little gap in the cylinder between the cylinder and the frame. Now, if I take my finger off the trigger and I let the hammer down, notice how the firing pin is not going through that gap anymore. I don't know if it's focusing enough to show you. Let's try it again here. There's the firing pin. You can see it right in that crack right there, right? There's the firing pin. There it is, now I can see it. And if I take my finger off the trigger, you can see my eye, you can see whatever's behind it, right? But you can't see, so that's proof that it works. If you dropped it like this, no firing pin is coming through. You can see in that, in that gap. It's very safe. So even if this were loaded, you'd think this is insane. Doing this on a loaded gun means you could accidentally, like that drop right there would fire a round off. But it wouldn't unless you have your finger on the trigger. So that's the safety mechanism. If I were carrying this gun and something happened and I had the hammer back and I dropped it and it was facing me and that hammer, even if the hammer mechanism fell, it would not fire a round. So that's how a, trans a transfer bar safety works. I find that very interesting because a lot of new shooters that are not familiar with gun safety, um, they're afraid of guns because they don't understand how they work. And in my opinion, revolvers are some of the safest guns around because they're a very simple design. There's less moving parts. And now with, I mean, not transfer bars are not new. I think they're like 30 years old, but maybe 20 years old, something like that. But anyway, just wanted to talk about that for a second. And since I had all the, the camera equipment out and the gun here, and uh, if you have any questions, I'd appreciate your comments. If you think uh, there's something I should have covered in the video or there's extra data that you have on it, please comment below. And thanks for watching.